China has more than a billion people. And Communist Party officials came up with a brilliant plan to use them to make money. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. The People's Republic of China has the world's second biggest economy. It wasn't always like that. But over the last several decades, Chinese communist officials have gotten really good at making money. See, back in the 1950s, Chairman Mao Zedong told his officials to kill rich people and take their stuff. But that only went so far because eventually China ran out of rich people to kill. So in the early 2000s, three-legged money toad and Communist Party leader Jiang Zemin led a brilliant new scheme. It combined the best elements of communism and cutthroat capitalism. Kill dissidents and take their organs, and then sell those organs to rich people at state-run hospitals, like this one. And it turns out you can make some serious money this way. You know, they say you can't put a value on human life, but in communist China, that value is up to $852,000. Now this money-making scheme looks too horrible to be true, and that's one reason why people don't believe it is happening. But the proof keeps coming out. There have been investigations into organ harvesting since 2006, but they didn't get much attention. Then a group called the China Tribunal held a series of hearings about it starting in 2018. They asked for evidence and testimony on whether forced organ harvesting was happening in China. And in particular, they looked at whether Falun Gong practitioners and Uyghurs were being targeted. Falun Gong is based on ancient Chinese spiritual practices. It has exercises that look a bit like Tai Chi, and its core philosophy is truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. Falun Gong became super popular in China in the 1990s, until Jiang Zemin realized there were like 100 million people practicing. And so he remedied that with this, and this, and this. Take that, compassion. The Uyghurs are a Turkic ethnic minority who live mostly in China's far west Xinjiang region. There are about 10 million Uyghurs, and they're mostly Muslim. Islam is unrelated to Falun Gong spiritually, but from the Communist Party's perspective, it's the same problem. There are lots of Uyghurs, and they believe in something other than the Communist Party. So the party remedied that with this, concentration camps. I bring that up because on March 1st, 2020, the China Tribunal issued a final judgment about whether the Chinese regime was harvesting organs from these two groups of people, Falun Gong and Uyghurs. It came after two long years of personal testimony and pouring through evidence, and long hearings that practically nobody watched, and statements hardly anyone read about because Western media, like the New York Times, were too busy getting paid by Chinese state-run media to run advertisements that look like articles. Anyway, on March 1st, the China Tribunal issued this 562-page judgment that we read through so you don't have to. It concluded, among other things, that forced organ harvesting has happened in multiple places in the People's Republic of China and on multiple occasions for a period of at least 20 years and continues to this day. It says that the victims are mostly Falun Gong practitioners, and that Uyghurs are also sometimes victims, and could be China's living organ bank for the future. That's the Chinese Communist Party for you, always thinking ahead. Finally makes sense why Chinese authorities have been collecting DNA from all the residents of Xinjiang. I'll note, by the way, that the China Tribunal was led by a panel of seven experts from several countries. It was chaired by Sir Jeffrey Nice. He's the attorney who led the prosecution of the former Serbian dictator Slobodan Milosevic for war crimes back in the 1990s. And none of the people on the panel were Falun Gong practitioners or Uyghurs, nor were any of them YouTube celebrities who could have told them that nobody wants to read a 562-page report about mass murder. So I'll just give you the highlights of the mass murder. Here are some of the reasons the China Tribunal concluded that the Chinese Communist Party really is killing people for their organs. One, there are extraordinarily short waiting times for organs. You can literally schedule an organ transplant in two weeks to take place on a certain day. In America, you might wait months or years for some guy to die in a motorcycle crash. In Communist China, the doctors just kill him for you. Two. 
The Communist Party routinely tortures Falun Gong practitioners and Uyghurs. It's not a big leap from torturing people to simply killing them. And if you also sell their organs, it's a great way to make money. Three, China built a massive organ transplant infrastructure starting in 2001. That's when the number of annual transplants began to boom. So they were building new hospitals and training new transplant doctors, but China didn't create its voluntary organ donation system until 2010. So that's super weird. And even today, there are very few voluntary organ donors in China. And that's tied to number four. Chinese authorities don't execute enough criminals to account for the number of transplants. The data suggests that Chinese hospitals do between 60,000 and 100,000 organ transplants per year. But China only carries out fewer than 4,000 court-ordered death sentences each year. So there aren't enough criminals to execute. And China's voluntary organ system only started nine years after the transplant boom and is still really small. That leads to only one conclusion. Chinese hospitals have been killing tens of thousands of additional people every year who aren't criminals or voluntary donors. The China Tribunal did, by the way, invite the Chinese government to join in and present their own testimony. The Chinese government did not respond at any point during the two years. But one of the interesting things about having a formal open process like the China Tribunal is that it's a forum for people to submit testimony who otherwise might not have had their voices heard. One person who submitted testimony was Dee Dee Kirsten Totlow, a former New York Times reporter. Totlow had tried to do a series of investigations into China's forced organ harvesting, but her editors shut her down. As a New York Times reporter in 2016, she was invited to an event held at Beijing Hospital, where state health officials talked about China's organ donation program. Over lunch, she overheard a conversation between two Chinese transplant doctors, which suggested they were being told they could no longer use prisoners of conscience for organ harvesting. But when she told her editors she wanted to investigate further and do a series of stories about Chinese hospitals using prisoners of conscience for organ transplants, it became clear to her that the issue was unwelcome at the New York Times. Now, on top of the conclusions from the China Tribunal, there's this very long, very detailed, and frankly kind of boring report published last November in a fancy peer-reviewed medical journal. It says a variety of evidence points to what the authors believe can only be plausibly explained by systematic falsification and manipulation of official organ transplant data sets in China, and that this is often incentivized by large cash payments. And you wonder why forced organ harvesting isn't getting much media attention. All the smart people who research this stuff make it sound super complicated. So let me put it simply, because this video is not made for just graduate school students. The Chinese Communist Party is lying about the data. They're killing people for their organs, and they're making lots of money. And if you think, Maybe this stuff happened before, but it couldn't possibly still be happening. Consider this. Even amid the deadly coronavirus outbreak, Chinese hospitals are still doing suspicious organ transplants. The CCP asked for applause for its double lung transplant on a coronavirus victim. But the fact that two matching lungs were found in a few days raises new suspicions of organ harvesting. So at this point, there's really no other conclusion you can make, unless you're the New York Times and just quash the reporting. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. And now I'll answer a question from one of our Patreon supporters who contributes so we can keep making this show. Mike Murphy asks, President Trump issued an edict that all COVID-19 information be channeled through Mike Pence. Mr. Pence advocates prayer power as one defense tactic. Will you consider creating a YouTube channel called USA Uncensored? Thanks for your question, Mike, because it allows me to plug my other TV show, America Uncovered. Yes, every week I do another entire show, just like China Uncensored, but about topics related to America. And last Thursday, I published an episode that should answer your question. It's called Coronavirus, 
Did Trump make the U.S. less safe? So watch that episode and tell me what you think. Thanks, Mike. And thank you to everyone watching. Be like Mike and support China Uncensored by contributing through our Patreon website. That's patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Our awesome supporters like Mike help us keep making episodes like this. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.